Hi and welcome. This is part one of our fine wool eyelet tutorial for our beautiful hat and is the continuation of our series from our fingerless gloves. And now we have a hat and coming soon will there be this beautiful neck warmer, cowl and also a headband. So let's get started. Now if you are new to the channel and you haven't yet subscribed please do so and if you've got any comments or questions you'd like to pop in the comments below that would be great um, and I'd love to um, have that engagement with you as you go through the pattern. Now if you've come across this video and you haven't yet sourced my pattern then you'll find that in the description a link to be able to purchase that as well. Okay, so I'm here in New Zealand and we're just shifting into spring at the moment. It's late October of 2023 and I know that a lot of us are gearing up towards Christmas, getting our gifts ready or ready for markets that we might be doing and my Northern Hemisphere crochet creatives, you guys are all beginning unfortunately to head through autumn and into your winter. So these sorts of projects are really great and because they don't take a lot of yarn we're generally working with one or two maybe into a third ball. This has just gone into the third ball for a medium hat and I'm hoping I have enough on here to actually get a set of gloves to go with it. First of all it's nice having something in a finer yarn rather than thick and chunky which is often the go for the hats or winter beanies. Now the other part of it is that we've done our linear ribbing which means that we've got an amazing fit, an easy fit um, across most sizes which is, is really great rather than working around the hat this way which can give you quite a snug finish and restriction over getting your sizes really precise. But as you can see look at how I've done the crown. Now what I've done here is I've incorporated a circular hat but added it to the linear ribbed and we've actually got the best of both worlds I think. If you have a look at the picture next to me here of my granddaughter wearing the hat, look at the beautiful shape that fits beautifully around the top of your head. So for those of you who have had frustration with your beanies in the past of having too much bulk, um, our best ever beanie, if you want to have a look at that pattern, that actually has a tapered area through here which does reduce the bulk on a 12 ply uh, beanie. However, this is even better because with a fine wool we don't want any bulk on top and so we're creating a eased in area then we're finishing the crown at the end and giving you just the most perfect finish. Now I'm going to also be showing you at the end of part two once we've done the seaming, created the crown, we'll show you how to do the removable pom-pom or fom-fom using a little cord clip which is a brilliant idea because it allows you to take it off for laundering. Right now I am also wearing, this is going to be the third piece of the collection, this is a C2C um, neck warmer, cowl, even a nice little headband. So what I've done here is created the eyelet pattern but done it as a C2C so you get this lovely diagonal pattern and you can do it either with a knot or with a little slide um, tab on it uh, or even you can convert this pattern into just a simple rectangle and do vertical lineal like this if you prefer find that easier particularly if you're a beginner and just uh, not sure if you want the challenge of a C2C. So this will be coming down the track and this will allow you then to have three different uh, items that you can coordinate together. These are great gifts, great items to make for the family, great items to also make for markets and if you are looking for products that don't take a lot of yarn and are also really versatile with their sizes then do check out my other products either on my website or on Etsy. Right we better get started. So what I'm going to do in part one is lay you up with your uh, getting your chain and your pattern set up. So we're going to establish our first seven rows and then from there we have a four row pattern repeat and then there's a bit of work to get the body built and then part two we'll be doing the seaming, crochet seaming through and then building the crown and learning how to put your pom-pom on. Right, let's get going. Happy crocheting. 
let's begin by looking at the tools of the trade that you'll need to do this project. This hat comes in four sizes, petite, small, medium and large, so please take the time to both check your tension and to have measured your head for your circumference and length. If the length looks too long, then move down to a smaller size, but make the pattern repeats for the size that you need for your circumference. We're working with a 3mm crochet hook. You'll need some scissors and some stitch markers. And for sewing in your ends, of course, a darning needle. And we'll be working with a 4-ply or fine 2 yarn. I prefer to work with natural fibres as I find they do give a nicer feel and do give a better bounce back with wear. Right. Let's start with our slip knot, and you will begin now with the required number of chains as per the pattern that you have selected the size. You'll be doing quite a number of chains depending on the size you've chosen and as you can see we're working down from the crown of the hat and including the fold up area. The blue hat is a petite and I'm working on a large and just remember that we are using US stitch terms. So let's start with row one. You're going to begin by working a half double crochet in the third stitch from your hook. Now if you're not familiar with US stitch terms there is a conversion sheet in your pattern which explains between UK and US stitch terms. Now I like to after my first stitch is created pop in a stitch marker at the top area of that stitch just to help me see where I'm going to be finishing. So yarn over Hook through, pull through yarn in all through three loops. Yarn over, through chain, pull through, pull through three. That is your half double crochet. So you'll continue with your half double crochets across the rest of the chains until you get to the end. At the end of each row you're going to chain one and turn your work and we'll begin row two. We're going to be working half double crochets in the back loop to get started. So just picking up that very back loop and popping a marker into that stitch again. I highly recommend this. It just helps you avoid from missing the last stitch and then creating a reduced decreased edge. So we just continue here with our half double crochet catching the very back loop. So yarn over through the back loop with your hook, draw through the yarn and yarn over and draw through the three loops on your hook. Now this area that we're working on is the lower part of the hat, the turn up or fold up area. By working a half double crochet into the back loop of your stitch, it forces the front loop to be visible and create a ribbed or linear effect. You can see this is creating a lovely ribbed effect 
and if we compare it to the maid hat it just gives that really nice ribbed turn up look almost like a knitted area but crocheted you will then be moving on to stitching a normal half double crochet so you'll be catching both those two top loops drawing through and through your three yarn over through the two linear little lines on top and what this does it distinctly then changes the pattern and defines that lower turn up area and you'll continue now to the very end of this row and we've just got a little change that we make this is now coming up to the crown or the top of the hat and what we're wanting to do is create a slightly drawn in eased in area so our last two stitches are going to be two single crochets at the end of the row at the crown end and as you begin your third row you will also start it with two single crochets this also gives us a very nice little edge for later when we are adding in our crown and creating the circular finish okay chain one and let's turn and begin row three and of course we're going to start with two single crochets and then this row will be a row of half double crochets all worked into the back loop only So you will continue this right across this row to the very end so you're working from your crown down towards the turn up area half double crochets in the back loop only to get that lovely ridged effect right now we're at the end of that row and I'm just going to make sure and this is the reason I use the stitch markers is that we do get our last half double crochet into the last stitch we don't miss it and therefore we keep our stitch count consistent and then like we will do on each row we will do a chain one and turn our work and we will begin row four now this row you are looking at the wrong side of your work so we begin with our half double crochets in the back loop remember we are at the lower end the turn up so each time we work this little area we're doing half double crochets into the back loop so when you are looking at this side of your work this is the wrong side now normally when you would do an eyelet row this would be the right side of your work now I have done it different so please note that so the eyelet pattern consists of basically two half double crochets worked as normal catching both those two loops of the stitch Okay, so now we're going to do one chain we're going to skip a stitch and we're going to work our next set of half double crochets in the following stitch this will then create a nice gap so half double crochet two chain one skip a stitch and work in the stitch following
two half double crochets in the next two stitches. One chain and repeat. And you'll work this right through up until the last three stitches. So you will be ending on a chain and a skip stitch. Okay, so that is the wrong side of your work. So our last set, two half double crochets, we do a chain and skip a stitch and we should then do just one half double crochet. We'll end the row then at the crown with two single crochets as per normal. At this end at the crown you will always end with two single crochets and begin the rows with two single crochets. So again, this is the wrong side of your hat. So please get this correct. Now I'm just counting the eyelets here to make sure that I keep consistent with how many I have as I work them and they should line up if I'm getting my stitches in the right position. So chain one and turn and we'll begin row five. Now row five two single crochets to get started and we'll pop in our stitch marker again just to ensure that we are locating that very first stitch. The half double crochets here on this row now are all going to be in the back loop and this is the right side of your work. Now what this is going to do is create a more textured look to your work, a more distinctive pattern by doing a half double crochet in the back loop even into the back loop of the chain that separates your two your pair of half double crochet so as you can see this is creating quite a textured look compared to the back and it's just uh, gives a bit more definition and more of a ridge by doing the half double crochet across back across that eyelet and that's the whole um, purpose of the design right side five rows have now been completed there's your turn up area of the hat that we're working towards and your eyelet so we've done five rows the fourth row being the eyelet row the fifth row that we've just completed brings our work uh, so that we're looking at the right side of our hat okay so we're going to continue rows six and seven as per the pattern and you will have now completed your first section and you'll be ready to begin the pattern repeat which starts now the next row will be with an eyelet row so you can see how it will sit with the turn up area you will continue now with rows four through seven the pattern repeat for the number of times specified for the size that you've chosen and your circumference of your head what you've measured and your finished work should be less so we want your hat to measure less than your head to ensure that we get a nice fit so not too loose not too tight either okay so now there's quite a bit of work for you to do to complete the required pattern repeats the number of times for the size of the hat that you've chosen and then you'll be ready to go to part two for the finishing of your final eyelet hat where you'll do the seaming the crown and learn how to do a removable pom-pom so i look forward to meeting you there on part two